Modbus is a communication standard to transfer values between computers. So let's say I have a computer one and a computer two, and I want to be able to transfer values over to the other one. It's a very simple networking communication protocol. It was designed back in the 1970s. And as such, there's a uh, simplicity and kind of the basic nature means that you can transfer very fast over a serial connection and that's going to be an RTU or um, you could also use ASCII mode that takes about twice as much as many characters to be able to transfer values but these are through a serial connection or you can have something that transfers through an Ethernet connection so TCP IP and so you have either serial or TCP IP for the communication. Now in, in Modbus, we have a couple different address spaces. Okay, and these are gonna be standards set up by the protocol to have uh, address spaces for coils. These are single bits. All right, we have discrete inputs. Now one of the things about these are they're read only versus the coil, that one is read write. And then as we look at another address space, the input registers, okay, those are 30,001 to almost 40,000, and those are read only as well. The ones that I typically use for most applications are these, the holding register, is where you could transfer 16 bit numbers over to another computer. Now it's very fast, I've been able to run at, um, you know, be able to transfer many values at uh, 10 hertz or faster. Uh, and it's very reliable as well. So it's very good for industrial systems where one of these computers might be, for example, a PLC, a programmable logic controller. Uh, you also might have something like an HMI, a human machine interface. So I'll just write that HMI. So where you have a display, where you want to be able to show something to an operator, like a trend or a value, and you need to transfer it over to that other computer. So uh, they're commonly used on some maybe older technologies. Uh, I still use those uh, occasionally when I go out to industrial control. Uh, I have industrial control applications. Um, and uh, just because it's very reliable, it, um, you know, OPC, DA, um, not as reliable, OPC UA better, uh, and there's MQTT, uh, and we'll also talk about WebSockets later. But let's just review the Python code for this one. And we're gonna set something up that is a server. Okay, so this is gonna be our server. And then we also have a client. All right, and the client can write values or the client can read values from the server. Now this used to be a, a slave master, okay, but we've changed the terminology uh, to client and server, okay. So um, the, uh, so we're going to now just design an application that can uh, s serve as a client and server. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and first of all, just, uh, let's see, let me make a little bit of room for this one. And I'm gonna have a couple files here, a server file, and we're gonna go ahead and just design a server with PyModBus. So that's gonna be a package that we'll need. And uh, if you don't have it, just go ahead and open up a terminal and do pip install pi modbus okay and it will install that package for you it, you might also need other dependencies it looks like it was able to install it with no uh, problem there okay and then i'm going to take my server now this one um, is going to be a modbus server okay so you can change some of the values in here pi modbus has clients and servers and other code templates for you in the documentation that are very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna import the start TCP servers. I'm gonna do TCP IP over ethernet. 
And then I'm also going to do Modbus device identification, a sequential data block, a Modbus slave context, and a Modbus server context. So you can see that some of the terminology is still there. Okay, I'm going to run async server, and I'm going to create 200 registers. I'll initialize a data store and I'll have first of all the digital input okay so there you can see those are going to be the coils uh, oh sorry discrete input there's my coil there's my holding register and there's my input register okay so just to review those were the address spaces that those will occupy all right, and then this is going to be my Modbus server context, um, slaves equals store, and then single equals true. And I'll initialize the server information, and uh, I'll create an identity, first of all. I'll just put AP monitor there. You can change it to whatever you'd like. Okay, I'll put the URL and the product name. So if you want to brand your um, your server you can do that and I'll just put a minor major minor revision all right so now my TCP server I'll go ahead and start my TCP server with that identity I'm just going to start it here on my local computer so if I use 127001 that is the local server here's a typical port that you use 502 for communicating over Modbus, but you could change that to a different port. You just need to open up the firewall to enable that one to get through. Okay, so if I'm main, so if I'm running this script, um, I'll print out that I started on port 502, and then I'll run an async server. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a command prompt, and then just change to desktop, and run Python and then this server. Okay, so I've started the Modbus server. And I'll just let, th let that run. And um, let's go ahead and create a client now. Okay, so let's do something with just these uh, coils that we can read and write to. So I'm going to create a new TCP client and connect to this one on my, it's running on my local computer right now. And I'll write a coil. All right, I'm going to start with just address one. And I'll write a true. And then I'll read coil. Okay, so I'm going to read a result and then print the bit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run that one now. And let's go ahead and create a new command prompt here. Okay, so I was able to read, write it that it was true, and then read it back, a value of true. Okay, so that was just a single bit. Now, um, let's do something just a little bit more complicated. We're going to write some numbers now. So, um, all right, I'll go ahead and create a Modbus client, just like we did before. And get um, initialize some data so I'm just gonna have five values here 0 0.1 1.1 2.1 3.1 4.1 then I'm gonna go through 10 loops here okay I'm gonna have a cycle print the cycle okay I'm gonna sleep for one second I'm gonna increment the data by one and I'll go through the data uh, incrementing it I'll write those to the holding registers now again that starts with 40,000 one so I'll write it to those holding registers. These are just going to be 16-bit numbers. Normally, I'll build these uh, these numbers. Okay, so I can do 16-bit integers, and I'll build, and then I'll write. Okay, and then I'll read the holding registers. Okay, so let's go ahead and read them with the read holding registers, and then I'll print what uh, came out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. One thing you'll notice is that these all have decimal places. And so there's a couple of tricks that people in the industry use with this standard 16-bit holding register. One is you can put two of those together to make a 32-bit number. 
The other thing, you can put four of them together to make a 64-bit number. So a 32-bit number is going to give you about seven decimal places of precision. A 32-bit number, about 14 decimal places. Or sorry, 64 is going to give you about uh, 14. Uh, a 32 will give you about seven. And then this, um, you know, this... Uh, 16 bit integer, it had to be integer values um, between a certain range up to like 32,000 uh, to negative 32,000. Okay, so, um, so it kind of depends on what you're trying to store. You've got to pay attention to the values that you're going to be storing. But let's run this one and just see the results of it. Okay, so the server is still running. And let's go through the different cycles here hmm got multiple values for argument unit hmm okay so let's see if I can debug this one okay write multiple registers Okay, so looks like I have a bug in this code. I'm going to see if I can figure this out. So I'll pause the video right now and see if I can figure out the error. All right, I was able to figure out the problem. Um, it looks like somebody updated the package, all right? And uh, it um, I was using an earlier one, 3.0.2, and this call to... Um, all right, this client two right here, the right registers, they updated it so uh, the address is no longer a part of the unit. Okay, so um, anyway, I I'm gonna go with what I have here. I just went back to an earlier version. Okay, a slightly earlier version, and the way you do that is just pip. All right, let's I'll just show you there. Pip uninstall. Pi Modbus, and I'll proceed. I'll uninstall it, and then I'll install Pi Modbus, and then just do the double equal sign 3.0.2, and so it's 3.1.3, I think, is something like that when I installed it the first time. So I just went back to 3.0.2. Um, it looks like somebody made a breaking change to the package there. So once I come back to this version and then run it again, all right, you can see that it's going to write and then read it again. Okay, so it, re it uh, writes it as a floating point number, but it has to convert it to an integer because it's a 16-bit integer. All right, so you can see the reads and the writes. The, the reads are going to be the integer values. So let's just talk about different values that you can build into this uh, builder function. And there are many different ones. You can have strings. All right. You can add bits, zeros, and ones. You can do 8-bit um, integers, unsigned integers, 16-bit. Okay, so there's a couple there. All right, 32-bit numbers as well 16-bit floats all right 64-bit integers unsigned integers okay and then you have 64-bit uh, floats as well so one of the disadvantages of Modbus is you can't necessarily send over easily images uh, or other types of just objects okay like uh, other communication protocols uh, you're pretty much just limited to bits, 8-bit, 16, 32, 64, or ways that you can combine those and then repatch them together. Now, if you need to unpack those, okay, so let's say you're going to uh, go with like a 64-bit a or a 32-bit, and uh, you may need to uh, pack and then unpack them again. You can do that with this command that I've shown in the web page for this module. So if you come over here, you're going to see some of the instructions, the sample code, and I'll try to update this with the latest version of Modbus, but the one that I was using, the Pi Modbus was 3.0.2. All right, and then um, if you have 
want to occupy two or six um, or four registers for a 16-bit uh, to make 32 or 64-bit then just import this struct uh, package and then you can combine the these uh, these individual bit registers back together again to make your your 32-bit or 64-bit number all right now the other thing is that Modbus it can transfer up to 2008 coils or 130 registers 16-bit each with each transfers uh, you might have to use larger reads and writes all right so um, although you know like I mentioned it has a few of these limitations um, it's still a reliable communication protocol especially if you're using it where security isn't a concern just in you know talking between two computers that are on an internet that's not connected to the uh, to the larger internet um, and there's other reasons why you might want to use it as well sometimes a PLC or an HMI needs to use that uh, interface so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial um, next up we're going to be starting on MQTT and uh, talking about broker and clients and then we're going to go to OPC UA with some examples there and then finally to WebSockets as well.